How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern with Brian Alvarez. 1 p.m. Saturdays with Jim Valley and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. It is. Wrestling is heating up. Once again, I say that every week. This has been a very fun ride uh, in the world of professional wrestling. A lot of wacky stuff happening. Right before the show, I just... I, <laughs> Jun Akiyama and Brian Danielson on collision. We'll talk about that, obviously. But big story here, Elimination Chamber preview today. Next week is Elimination Chamber for that crazy early morning PLE. I believe it's 5 a.m. here on the East Coast. We're live in Australia. We're going to be talking about The Rock's return to SmackDown. Man, what a segment that was. I got to tell you, this version of The Rock was so good. So good. I watched this thing in my house. Uh, I didn't, you know, it's funny. I didn't watch it on Friday. Well, we're going to talk about this after the break, but I didn't watch it on, on Friday. I watched it Saturday morning with a bunch of people in my house, and the whole house just stopped to watch this man. So good. We're going to talk about that. AEW continuing to build the card for Revolution. This is a sold-out, jam-packed, show for Sting's last match. His retirement is coming in a couple of weeks here. We also have the Mercedes Monet story, new set coming to AW Dynamite, and a whole lot more. Guys, we are jam-packed today. Do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. That's where I post all my notes. When we come back from break, we're going to talk about this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here in Sports Byline with me, Andrew Zarian, here on a Sunday. Let's talk about SmackDown. Let's go right into this because this was a, uh, you know, you got to look at on card, on the on paper. Matt, this was a slammed show. Yes, it was. They built this thing up. I mean, to, to and, and, you know, they, obviously the whole thing was piggybacked on Dwayne. You know, that was the big story here. But. Where do you did you watch it, the whole show live? What was what was the feel for the show while it was happening? I missed parts of the opening match, and then I went back and kind of looked at it, and I was, and it it they got the momentum going on that show. I thought the crowd was hot most of the night. Yeah, and they were obviously there to see the rock segment, um, which was fascinating in so many ways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it started off, I mean, you know, Dominic and Kevin, Kevin Owens started the show. This was a qualifier for the Elimination Chamber. It went about 14 minutes. Big story was Kevin Owens, you know, dominating here and them setting him well, up. Well, can I tell you? Yeah. Can I tell you real quick? Dominic yeah. Mysterio, I, I don't know when it happened, but he got really good. He got point. really, he got really good a while ago. <laughs> yeah. He got really good yeah, a while just, ago because he's just. It's starting to become more noticeable now that how good he is. You know, I had YouTube playing, and I, I don't know what it was, but it was like, I guess it was like the evolution of Dominic in that company. <laughs> it was like, I think it was like one of the WWE like video things that they did, like Dominic from beginning to now. And, mm -hmm. you know, he was doing the Lucha stuff with his dad. And I remember everybody's like, why is he on TV? Why yeah. is he not in NXT? Why is he on TV? Why is he not starting from the ground up? Why are they elevating him? Why are they pushing him? You know, sometimes people see something that we don't on TV. And some of that probably is nepotism. You know, his dad mm -hmm. is one of the most successful insisted professional it, yeah. wrestlers ever. And he most yeah. likely <laughs> insisted on it. And good for him. That's what a father does. You take care of your own. You take care of your son and, or your daughter. And you elevate them to the, to the best that they could have. And I think a lot of that was blowback on Dominic uh, as to why he's on TV. But man, when he got good, he got good. And listen, I see, I have a very different perspective when it comes to the WWE product because I got two young kids and they are seven and they are eight and they are peak entry level to WWE. This is the age that all of us got into it. Most of us, especially my age group. They're into Dominic, man. They're into Rhea. A lot of the guys that we like does nothing for them. L.A. Knight, I mean, he slowed down a little bit, but they're into him. They are creating characters that are resonating. 
with the younger audience. And that's great. Dominic has become so much better. And he's not just the promos, like you were saying. Like, everybody talks about how good he is for the heat, for the heat, for the heat. That was a really good match. Yep. With one of the best, Kevin Owens. L.A. Knight and Drew McIntyre came to blows backstage after this during an interview set up. Again, you know what was interesting about this? L.A. Knight is so over the top, right? He's doing, and I mean this with no disrespect, no negativity here, right? He's essentially doing like Dwayne and Steve Austin in one, right? Yeah, that's his whole whole shtick. He does that, uh-uh. Pretty much. He does that. He does the head bob. That's his whole shtick. Again, we're around the same age, same influence. That's what he saw what wrestling is. That's the type of professional wrestler he is. But Drew's promos were, it, it's so calm in a way and menacing where it made LA Knight look so over the top and like old school cartoony when they were going back and forth. And I kind of liked it. And he brought it up. He said, he's like, oh, you, you know, your bravado is so over the top. It's just uh, essentially you're just masking mm-hmm how you really feel for your inadequacy. He's essentially alluding that he's better than him, and that's why he overcompensates. Man, this was good. Nice nice backstage segment here, setting something up there. Tiffany Stratton defeated Zelina Vega. This was not a good match. No, but... I didn't I, like I this. Think, yeah, I, Tiffany Stratton um, is going is going to struggle a little on the main roster for a minute. It's fine. She's going to get it. Well, listen, she yeah. has the look. She She's not bad. She had a good run in NXT. I mean, she has a million-dollar look, oh, yeah. and, and that's half mm-hmm. the battle here. She hit the uh, prettiest moonsault ever for the win. So she got a spot in the Elimination Chamber. We'll see how she does. Legata Del Fantasma was ringside with Electro Lopez distracting Vega. So they're continuing that whole That's cute. continuing, yeah. <laughs> Authors of Pain, mm-hmm. Akam and Razor defeated Javier Bernal, Bernal. and Bernal and 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 Bu Morris. Oh, Bo Morris. Bo Morris. <laughs> In a one minute squash. Okay, <laughs> they're just gigantic. That they're doing their of, yeah they're they're just doing their thing. They're 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 doing the same same thing they did before. Just doing squash matches. And and maybe this time they'll actually pull the trigger on these. I want guys. Paul Ellering to start cutting the promos. Yeah, I would. It, that would that would that would warm my heart from a, uh, someone that grew up in the '80s watching wrestling. You know what's <laughs> interesting though? Managers are back in WWE. They've been back for a little bit, but they're back back. Like all the way back. Like everyone's got a manager now. <laughs> right. Like how many managers are there now? Oh. uh... God, at least a half a dozen, right? Who? Name them. Name well, me some. Well, you got Heyman. You got yeah. You got Heyman. You've got um, Ellering. Uh, Ellering. Um. Uh. Scarlet. Um. Oh, there's some more. There's a Heyman. whole bunch of them now. There's a whole bunch, but they're built. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it's good to see this because I think some guys need managers. Some some ladies need managers. Uh, and I don't like that a lot of the managers do the dual act where they also wrestle. Like I've never, I, I never like that. that. Actually, I do you I like? Don't mind it, but mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. Like Scarlet wrestling instead of managing, I think she's far more effective as a manager than a wrestler. Lana was the same thing. Yeah, I didn't want to see Lana wrestle, even though I have no problem with her doing whatever she's doing. But I, I think she's so much more effective as a manager. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Naomi defeated Alba Fire to qualify for the Elimination Chamber. So those are your two women qualifying for next week. This was also uh, interesting to see. Logan Paul defeated The Miz to qualify for the Elimination Chamber. You know, they got something with this guy. This was his first television match, I do believe. It went 12 minutes, 44 seconds. Safe match. The Miz is good. Was able to, you know, present them in a good way. Uh, listen, I brought this up on I, I, on Twitter. And did you see they added Post Malone to the rest, uh, yes. for, to 2K24? Uh, I'm not saying Post Malone is wrestling. It, no. Yeah, I'm not saying he's wrestling, mm-hmm. right? But a, a major pivot here, the last couple of years, the last, I want to say, two years, okay. has been the celebrity 
wrestlers, but celebrity wrestlers that could do it. Not celebrity wrestlers like Drew Carey that's going to enter the Royal Rumble and jump out. You know, now you wasted a spot for a comedy purpose. They've discovered that, you know, some of these guys are real athletes. Some of these guys already have a pool. Logan Paul is an anomaly, okay? For all the good that Bad Bunny was when he wrestled. And I got to tell you, that match in Puerto Rico last year, uh, I loved everything about it. Was it the best match? Was Is he a great wrestler? No, but he doesn't need to be because it worked. On Logan's side, they have the opposite. They actually have a really good wrestler. And this guy does this part-time. And he got in later. He's actually, I mean, I'm, I'm stunned how good he is. Not that I expected anything less. He's a fantastic athlete. I mean, not that, that's given. Forget about liking him personally or not. Unbelievable athlete here. But they want more of this. They cross want branding. Cross branding. They want more of this. Now, everybody's saying Taylor Swift. I don't think Taylor Swift is wrestling. Okay, guys? <laughs> Let, let's, let's stop that. <laughs> I don't want to see that either. But you know what? Man, if Taylor Swift showed up, what would that do to their numbers? This is a whole different world we're entering right now with WWE. More crossovers. I see it happening. When we come back from break, I'm going to take some time and talk about this Bloodline segment here. Because this was big. And this, this, there was a lot of hints here. A lot of winks and nods. A lot of tongue-in-cheek. Also, Nick Aldis introduced Braun Breaker as a newest SmackDown signee. I think that's a good move for him. We're going to see more of him on the roster. And this is the future, right? He's going to be a future big, big star in that company, hopefully. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byland. We'll be back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's talk about the Bloodline segment. This was big. I am very curious how this show does because this show uh, could possibly, I, I think Dave brought it up, this could possibly be the number one show on network television, this SmackDown. And if it is, it would be the first time WWE has ever been number one on network television before, which is actually unbelievable to think about because in the 80s, they did that big show, right? They did, what was it, the main event with Andre and Hogan? And it got, like, yes. I think the estimated number was 32 million viewers. I think the closer was in the 20s, like the actual number. But that's still unbelievable. And they were nowhere near the top. <laughs> and it shows you how television and media has changed. The way you consume wrestling has totally changed. I got calls all day yesterday afternoon from friends that are disenfranchised wrestling fans, former wrestling fans. They still watch it, not really. And... I asked everybody, how did you see the segment? Did you watch it on SmackDown? And do you know, none of them watched it on SmackDown. They watched it on YouTube. They watched it on Twitter. They saw the Instagram clips. They saw the 5,000 TikTok clips. They saw people talking about it. So they sought it out in a, whatever way they found it. It's a new way of consuming media. End of the day, your, your final number for a three-hour program is not really the meter that's telling you how hot you are. All the interaction is. And guess what? It got a lot of that. Roman Reigns comes out to a 45-minute entrance. He calls Salt Lake <laughs> City people a bunch of idiots. Then he said everything... Uh, then he said, everything they will say has meaning and purpose. It's information everyone needs to understand. I actually thought this line was very important. because it, it was very set important. Up the rest of the promo. Yeah. Well, all yeah. of it was very important, right? Because there was a lot of that. There was a ton of that in this. A lot this. of little, yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of little I'm, things. Mm -hmm. And am I seeing it because I'm looking for it? Or am I seeing it because that's what they're telling me the story is? I don't know, and, and I'd like someone who is not really, and I should have asked that to my couple of my friends. Like, did you pick this up? Did you pick that up? Because all people saw was the awesome promo that The Rock delivered. Here comes The Rock, music hits, big cheers in the beginning. He's wearing the, the Versace shirt, but as a vest, okay? He has like a yes. Versace vest on. Very old school Dwayne, okay? Straight out of the Attitude Era. 
He did the Straight inbred out of, jokes. Uh, the nation stuff. Okay. He did the polygamy jokes. He did the inbred jokes. Uh, this was 1998, Dwayne, for sure. Right? This was very much first nation, you know, uh, uh, first run of his nation of domination heel, like when he was picking up steam. It was really cool to see. He, he pretty much ragged on the crowd. Uh, he told, uh, he blamed everyone for ruining the main event of WrestleMania because of the Cody stuff. He also ignored Royal Rumble win and said Cody has his chance and he lost. <laughs> Which I don't know what that means. Oh, I guess because he lost People the first didn't... time. Yeah. Yeah. So people didn't take this right. I, I, I got where he was going. He's, he's being a heel and everybody is kind of going, uh, oh, you know, you're, what do you mean? Cody won the Royal Rumble. He gets a chance. No, that's not the point. He's setting up that they, they're, they're the bosses and the bloodline runs everything. It doesn't matter. That's what they're setting up. Yeah, but here's my problem, so, okay? Two weeks ago, mm -hmm. they had here's Cody come out. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, uh, and I get that there's more to the story, right? Anytime I speak to somebody from WWE, from creative, from anywhere, there's, it's... There's and another layer is going to come out. Everybody's very tight-lipped, mm -hmm. and everybody's saying, let the story tell itself. Great, fine, I believe you, because I think the story has been doing well the last couple of years. However, you had Cody come out there. He has been telling us that he needs to fulfill the story. He has to fulfill his father's legacy. He wins the freaking Royal Rumble again, and then goes out there the following week, and he's like, oh, by the way, I'm not challenging you. It's not my time. It's Dwayne's time to beat you. So are they going to say that he was under duress <laughs> when he said uh, that? Something like that. I so I, I, they're going to say he, he got bad advice or something. Like I, that. I, I, don't I don't know. know. I hope they explain it. I hope they explain it. Cody needs to do it. Cody needs to do it sooner than later for okay. sure. That needs to happen in the next week or two. So we got, he said that he will do everything in his power to make sure Cody walks out of WrestleMania a loser. Interesting. So then there was a moment that. He said something about, I forgot what was, I forgot the words, but he was essentially talking about Cody, but he was, is this it? And he, but he was pointing at Roman. It was that line. I'm going to make it sure you like walk out of WrestleMania camera. a loser. And, and yeah. listen, that was done by design. That wasn't happenstance. Of None of this was happenstance. Okay. None of this was happenstance. They are telling a story, but the delivery of rock, everybody's like, well, this was like 1998 rock. It really wasn't. It was a different rock, okay? The promo was built on reality and not being a pro wrestling hokey promo. If you're going to say, if I'm going to say 1998 rock, 1999 rock, I'm going to go near LA Knight, right? That's the type of promo he does. This was different. This was more built into reality, which I liked a lot. Then... He does it if you smell what the rock is cooking. They put the finger up, right? The the one finger up. But he does it. He does this. Guns out. I don't know if that, I don't know if that was just coincidence or not. Well, I mean, it, it is be. what Cody At did. He point, he that's what Cody did when he won, right? He won the rumble. He did the bullet um, club thing. He did the guns out bullet club thing. So maybe that was that, or maybe that was the happenstance. Maybe that was just. You know, The Rock put, not putting his finger in and, and keeping it out. You know, like people like do this and do this and they do this like they don't get it right. Maybe it was one of those. I'm, yeah. I'm doing finger signs here and nobody on the radio could see. <laughs> so sorry, guys. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot where I am. Um, so I, I, can I, I, add I something yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Add something. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so, so one thing I noticed is you, you, I know you liked it. Because your generation, where you grew up with, this was your viewing point when he Attitude Era Rock was your jam. You you grew up on this. Yeah. So I wonder how many people after that that only know The Rock as Dwayne Johnson, the actor, got caught onto this. If they look at this differently and they go, "Oh, this guy's supposed to be a a, a fun actor from Hollywood. Why is he being such a?" a bleep hole for lack of a better word yeah you know? I, I i wonder how that's being taken i don't know um 
I, I do think there are a ton of, of younger wrestling fans that are Dwayne detractors out there because they don't like his promos. They think it's hokey. And maybe a little bit, you know. I, I felt that I felt that 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 initial promo he did when he said, Is he gonna sit at the head of the table, right? That came off. I mean, the ending line was great, but that came off as like a very standard rock promo that didn't doesn't age as well. Right? It felt an older promo. This didn't feel that way, and I think they all realize that. And this is the rock's brilliance as an actor. He was able to pivot into this. Also, playing a heel is so much easier. It's mm -hmm. so much easier. Because it's easier to grab aspects of your, your, your actual personality when you're a heel. Because it's, 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 it comes, it's easier to be mean. It's not for... Mm -hmm. I, I, I truly believe that. And I think for Dwayne, this came out so natural um, that it works. So now the story is, what the heck do they do with WrestleMania? Because obviously that tag match is out the window. I, I can't see Seth Rollins wrestling twice and Cody wrestling twice. Does the story get fulfilled for, for Rock and Roman at WrestleMania 41? Is that where we go? That Do we go to like SummerSlam? Maybe that's where. Yeah, it sounds like uh, they're going to another match. I, I, it seems but. like it, but when? Maybe SummerSlam. Maybe that's mm -hmm. your big SummerSlam. But this match has to be a WrestleMania match. Yes. I, I think they're doing another year long build like they did with Cena all those years ago. I don't know. And I, hope I that don't. Brock's body holds up. <laughs> well, we hope his body holds up. We ho hope that his acting schedule doesn't get uh, inundated. Uh, you know, he's on the board of directors right now for WWE for two years, and I'm sure that's going to keep him there. So we're going to see a lot more of him. Does this become a regular thing that we see him on TV throughout the year? This isn't just a one off. There's a lot of these questions, tons. And I think it's important to talk about. You know, this is the pivot here the company's making. Tomorrow, Monday Night Raw, Cody versus Drew, another great lineup. Gunther versus Jey Uso, last chance battle royal for the women's elimination chamber spot. Johnny Gargano, Tomasa Ciampa, The Miz, and Our Truth versus Damian Priest, Finn Balor, Dominic Mysterio, and JD McDonough. Chad Gable versus Ivar. Elimination chambers next week. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. One. Probably after the break because we're running out of time here. But this is another stacked show. This is a mega show here. There's an Elimination Chamber match to determine uh, who faces Seth Rollins. There's an Elimination Chamber match to determine who faces um, for the Women's World Championship. Rhea Ripley in her hometown. Naya, Undisputed Tag Team Championship. The Judgment Day against Pete Dunne and Tyler right. Bate. I think it's time to put the title on Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate and Grayson Waller effect with Cody and Seth. I'm sure there'll be a story here. When we come back from break, we're going to go into all things AEW leading up to Revolution in a couple of weeks here. Also, a couple, couple interesting things they're doing here. All right? We'll talk about it. I'm curious what happens in, uh, for their pay-per-view schedule. I'll leave that. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. That's where I drop most of my news, my scoops on there. AEW. This Wednesday. This is interesting, right? They are getting ready for this big pay-per-view. Revolution is a tremendous pay-per-view for them. Uh most attended show in in a long time outside obviously outside of all in in the states seven sixteen thousand people in the building i think the building could fit 19 i don't think they're gonna do 19 but this is as as close to a sellout as they they could have imagined sixteen thousand plus in that building maybe we'll be at 17 maybe we'll be at 18 by the end of this but this is a very important show for them sting's last match you're also now getting a lot of things in motion post-revolution. You have a new set debuting on March 6th, which a lot of people said that the tunnels are coming back. I, I, I got to tell you, I saw some things. I did not see any tunnels, but I could be wrong. Again, I, I don't know. Maybe what I saw, what I read was, was outdated or wrong or whatever, but uh, they do have a new set coming. They have a whole new design coming. 
to dynamite. The look is changing. The colors are changing. So that's going to be interesting to see what they do. But Revolution, this is a big card. Will Ospreay, Takeshita. Will Ospreay's first match, I guess, as an official AEW employee against Takeshita. Don Callis' family. They're both family members, so I don't know what they're going to do with this if something's changing. Well, that was a promo he cut on uh he cut on uh Dynamite, right? Yeah. He said the only no one can face these two, so I gotta uh put my own family members against each other to give you it was just total arrogance on his part to present it that way. Like my my people are the best, therefore we're gonna yeah. showcase them at revolution type thing. Yeah, you all you're also gonna get uh Eddie Kingston against Brian Danielson for the AEW Continental Crown Championship. This is, I, you know, roll in so I, many ways. I think, Dan, <laughs> listen, man, I, I think Danielson needs a title. I don't want Eddie to lose this title, but I think Danielson needs something. You have key assets in this company with people like Brian Danielson. Why is he not your champion? I know he doesn't want to be, but, you know, to some extent, you got you to have the guys that are going to draw on the top. And he's one of those guys. This is going to be a great match. Tony Storm, Deanna Perrazzo, they've been building this up so well. I love the Tony Storm gimmick. Did you like Wet Ink? She's awesome. What did you think of Wet Ink? I, I did. I did. <laughs> it's just, I mean, she's so, like, it's so over the top. And I, I don't know if you caught it. Um, she did a, she did Jericho's podcast. And she did the whole thing in character. I have it's not seen it. I have hilarious. to listen to it. I have to listen to it. <laughs> Orange Cassidy defends against Roderick Strong. Is this a time to take the international title off of him and give it to Roddy? Hey, listen. Matt Taven from the other night. Did you see this man? He showed out. He showed out. Oh, he, man. He you know definitely... what? Good for him. Because that, that the worst thing that happened to him was getting that Ring of Honor world title. And everybody poo-pooed on him. Listen, including me, I just think it was a bad time for it. I was at that garden show, okay? I was at that MSG show. I that building was packed, right? And they everybody wanted Okada, and Matt Taven's You're talking in this about the crossover. Match. The crossover, yeah. You're talking that, about that, the crossover show, yeah. Yeah, WrestleMania what, 2017 or 18? 19. Yeah. 19? 18. 19. Okay. 18. Yeah. Hold so, on. Hold on. N 19. 19. 19. Okay. <laughs> I think. Wait, I'm very confused now. 18, 19, uh, whatever it was. The years have, have all blended. Uh, I, I, that poor guy never recovered from that, and he was a world champion. It just it was bad timing for everything. I thought he showed out. He did great. I, 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 it was a, that, that promo he cut afterwards that AEW put out on social was great, too. Check it out. Fantastic stuff. So does Roddy, Roddy take the title from, from Orange? I, uh, maybe. We'll see. AW World Championship, Samoa Joe, Hangman Page, Swerve Strickland. Is it the time to take the title off of Joe? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think they're going to set it up. For they're going to the set up something. Yeah, there's going to be something wonky. This match won't go up. This is going to be one of the first few times the AEW World Championship won't be the main event. So, well, they got a, they got a big story I, here with this main. Sting and Darby Allin. Yeah. This, this match. AEW yes. World Tag Team Champions against the Young Bucks in Sting's retirement. Does Sting leave as champion? Does Flair screw him for the 86th time in his career? We haven't seen much of Rick, though. Is, do we know for sure that he's going to be around? I know I they said know. he would be, but he hasn't been so. around the last few weeks. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with that. We'll see. This Wednesday on Dynamite, Blackpool Combat Club, John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli versus FTR. Great match. AW World Champion Samoa Joe Swerve Strickland, Brian Cage versus Hangman Page, Hook, and Rob Van Dam. It was also announced that Rob Van Dam will be on the 420 episode of Collision. <laughs> I love how they announced that. A month out. <laughs> a month out. Like well, two random. months out. Two months out. <laughs> two months out. You got to prepare for this. <laughs> I have some news about uh, April also coming soon. 
I'm just waiting to confirm something. Women's World Champion, Tony Storm in action, Deanna Perrazzo in action this Wednesday. Also, on Collision, okay, next week. There was no Collision yesterday, by the way. So many people, I love that meme. Somebody put out a meme of the NBA All-Star Weekend, okay, and they had this, like, weird, right. crazy set. Uh, I think Kenny, I, I oh, man, I, I got to pull it up, but his name is Kenny. He posted a lot of these memes on Twitter, and he wrote, what, what, what is happening on Collision? And I'm like, oh, no, that's the new stadium stampede, dude. <laughs> that actually would be pretty cool. If they but the big match for next week is Brian Danielson and Jun Akiyama. We're continuing the Brian Danielson wrestlers wrestling uh, tour. He's just wrestling everybody he's ever wanted to work with. Yep. Who else and, can he I work mean, with? He's... Who else is there? Oh. I'm sure there's a few people over in Japan, guys. I'm sure. I'm sh- Some Listen, of them I don't even think of, right? Some that we, mm. I, like, I wouldn't have thought of Jun Akiyama and Danielson. I'm so into that because I love wrestling. I like to see weird pairings that I wouldn't see. I saw uh, Chris Hero and, um, oh, man, from Kayentai in Evolve. Who was in Kai oh, and Tai? Um, Come on, you Taka, know. Taka. Uh, Not Taka. Ta- is that how you're thinking? Dick Togo. Um, Dick Togo. Dick Togo. Okay. <laughs> Dick Togo and Chris Daniel uh, uh, and Chris Hero I saw in in Evolve in at Laboom in Queens. And it was, I mean, just really wacky to see, you know? Like, you don't, it wasn't, it, it's, it's interesting how perspective of wrestling changes, right? Like, if that's a main event on TV, you're going to be like, oh, what is that the main event? That's a main event on, on the show. You're, you're losing your mind over it. You're not Kiyama, about, Brian Danielson. How about I'm Danielson, how about Danielson and uh, Naito at Forbidden Door? How about that one? How would that go for you? Have they wrestled before <laughs> or no? They've never wrestled before. I don't think so. Naito. No, that's, that's a match. That's a match still in their back pocket they can pull out. And well, they have a lot of these for it. Forbidden Door. I think you're going to see maybe CMLL yeah. mm-hmm. uh, blended in here. Um, I, I have news on Forbidden Door. I, I think it's going to be a pretty big Forbidden Door this year. I, I, they're they're, they're going to do something different here. Where was Forbidden Door last year? Do you remember? Um, Toronto? I believe it was in was Toronto. It? it was, and that was a big show. Yes. Mm-hmm. That sold out quickly, right? Mm-hmm. yes yeah i'm curious to see how this one does well i'll i'll give me like a week or two on that i've been sitting on some stuff but you know they're they're, they're making some changes here it's very obvious with their tv uh you know but they still have some problems in this company you know i saw in the observer it was reported that the, like essentially the honeymoon is over the honeymoon's been over for them you know i i you cannot operate as a startup for far too long. You know, AEW was a startup, and it was a very successful startup. I think a lot of the issue with AEW is that they came out hotter than expected. Way hotter than expected. Those TV numbers, uh, do we, do you, did people forget what the estimated number was going to be? We were saying how, and we, I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting everybody together, but there were experts on TV and on peak viewership, on how you know P1, P2, P3 viewership works and listenership works in radio. These people were chiming in. And the estimate was like, if, if they do over a half a million viewers per episode, that is unbelievable. That was the expectation. That's where the bar was set. And they came out swinging in the millions. You know, 1 million here, 1 million there, 900,000 here. They're still in the 800. They still go into high eights, maybe low nines. But they came out way hotter than expected. And a lot of the things to sustain that were not in place. Now we're seeing they hired a COO. They're hiring new people for television. They're changing their television look a little bit. These are all strategic moves for now. It's a very important year for them with TV rights. Very important year. Just just to put in perspective, uh, this week's Dynamite did... uh, 811,000 uh, viewers on Valentine's Day. So, on Valentine's Day, okay. I mean, they're staying steady. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, you know, so, they're staying steady works. there, but the, the, the attendance is more worrisome than the TV numbers. Correct. That, that's, the, that's the only thing here. 
Because attendance is your first level of gauging how people are into your product. And again, they also came out very hot. I remember those attendance records. Nobody was anticipating them to do 10,000 people in a building every show. Nobody was talking about that. Just a few years prior to AEW, people thought it would be impossible in North America to put for a promotion or for an indie to put on a show with more than 10,000 viewers, uh, 10,000 in attendance. It had been 20 years or so, more, since the last time a promotion was able to do that consistently. AEW does it, you know, for pay-per-views. They're, they're selling well. But Dynamite, Collision, they need to be at least in the four four thousands for health reasons, for the company, for growth reasons. You know, when you're seeing it's like 2,200, 2,600, you, you know, then you start questioning, okay, what can we do to combat this? One. Is this... Is this a product failure? Is it a marketing failure? Is it picking the wrong venues strategically? These are all questions. Again, growing pains. These are all growing pains. And I hope, you know, I know that there's major initiative here to combat that. I know the company is very uh, aware of issues. And Tony's not a dumb guy, man. He's a very smart guy. You could get, you could, listen, creatively, not, not alluding to this, creatively, you could get burnt out. But if you're, if you are an intelligent business guy, you, you, that doesn't really burn out. That's in you. And I don't think Tony is burnt out with that. But a lot of change is happening here. I'm excited to see it. Very excited to see what happens here. Ten. When we come back, we're going to touch on a few more things to wrap up the show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. Man, that UFC fight last night. Volkanovski lost to Poria, new featherweight champion. Tapuria knocked out Volkanovski with a punch. 332 in the second round. You know, this ends the reign. He, he was champion for 1,526 days. Longer than Roman. <laughs> Longer than Roman. Uh, th by the way, Roman has not beat the record, the third record. Did you see that? He's still under no. it, I think. I think he's like a couple days out or like two weeks out. I got I to gotta take a look. Maybe maybe he did beat him. Maybe I'm wrong here. Uh, by the way, the, do you know when he won this title, Volkanovski? He, beats, he beat Max Holloway at UFC 251 back on December 14, 2019. Crazy. I thought it was great. I, I rarely talk about UFC here. I love MMA. Uh, I just don't have an avenue to talk about it. And I know a lot of, uh, you know, Dave talks about it. And that's plenty for Observer <laughs> fans. <laughs> Let Dave talk about it. Uh, Garrett and Dave did a, uh, did a great show last One. night. You can check that out on the Wrestling Observer website. But listen, I, I think the next, I think for AEW, I'll say this, the next few months are going to be very telling on the direction that they're headed as a company. Between the TV rights, between streaming, between adding more PLEs to their schedule, this is a company that is now realizing the importance of catching on fire. They were very lucky. They caught on fire very early, and they're still, you know, they're still using that. That's still propelling them. But... I think this is going to be very telling on the future of that company. I'll say that. I'll wrap the show up with that. Guys, we'll see you all next time. Wrestling Observer Live.